My name is Galen Paul. I am a Christian musician. Been in the ministry for over 30 years. Written and composed four albums that I'm proud of. Uh, my wife would say six, but I'm only really proud of four, so. Born and raised uh, in St. Paul. I, I love music. I mean, I would goof around on the piano, guitar, you know, but never really got serious with music till later. When I fell in love with my girlfriend for the first time, she invited me to go to a Paul McCartney and Wings concert. This is after the Beatles broke up. It was my first rock concert I ever went to. I was just blown away. I'm like, wow. So I'm listening to this rock concert and he, and he sang this song called Maybe I'm Amazed. I'm like listening to it and I'm like, wow, I love this song. And so I would go home and start learning Paul McCartney's music on the piano. That's how I got started, just playing and singing by myself. I had a, a Jesus pushed down my throat type of thing all my life. So I rebelled against it. I heard the salvation message over and over again, that I felt the heart pumping thing, and I go, oh, forget this. And, you know, and I, I rebelled. I, uh, I was all alone in a warehouse job that I worked at when I was about 18 years old. Just me and God, all by myself. Uh, I was actually contemplating suicide, seriously. I heard this voice saying, if you're gonna throw your life away, give it to me instead. I, first of all, I didn't hear voices before. Okay, so this was new to me, man. It was just like, okay. And it was a spiritual voice in my head, you know. And I just simply, my prayer of salvation was, okay, take it. Boom, radical transformation. He was bruised for our all I remember is this feeling of a, a presence all around me. This peace, just overwhelming peace just flooded me, just engulfed me. And just, you know, wanting to know but more about this. What is this? What's happening to me? God loved me enough to pursue me. Finally, when I was ready, he says, here I am. Instead of throwing your life away, why don't you give it to me? So that was my experience on how I came to know the Lord. I became a Christian and I changed the words to maybe I'm amazed at Jesus, I'm amazed. I recorded it, took, to, took it to my job and I played it for my friend Doug. And he goes, you know, why don't you just start writing your own music? And I went, write my own music? What are you crazy? I don't know how to write music. And he goes, yeah, just go home. Let the Holy Spirit help you write your own music. I still remember my first song I ever recorded was called I Believe in You. And I recorded it and I played it on this little handheld recorder and I listened to it and I went, I actually liked it. That was my experience of getting into the Christian music writing ministry. And um, that was that. I actually recorded my first album around 1980. I, I wasn't that accomplished of a songwriter, singer, songwriter, but I was, I was gung-ho, I wanted to do it. Keith Green had just come out at that time. I started listening to him constantly, and he was such a spiritual inspiration to me too with his message. I've known Galen probably for 30 some odd years. Uh, I got to be a producer and an engineer for some of the most successful recordings that he's had in, in, in his career. Well, when I first heard Galen, he was playing piano, and he sounded so much like Keith Green in that moment. After I started working with him, I realized uh, pretty quickly, his vocal has this very smooth, uh, almost McCartney-esque sound. And I told him that one time when we were recording in the studio, and he says, oh, I, I love McCartney. I knew right away I wanted to work with him. His songs had the ability to cut through the noise of the time. I don't charge for my concert. I do love offering and whatever people can afford if they want to give something. You know, Keith Green was probably a big influence on me with that. But, you know, when I did my first album, it cost a lot of money to do. And I remember sitting down with my wife 
debating on how much we're going to sell these for. And the Lord just spoke to me in my spirit and says, I don't want you to sell them. I want you to give them away. And I thought, that's just in my head. I'm not, that can't be God. You know, and I just, I got to make money here, God. And he goes, no, I want you to give them away. I'll never forget this first concert we did. And I had tapes at the time. Okay, this is before CDs. It was right around when CDs first came out. I was, I was saying, hey, my, my, I'm just giving these away for whatever you can afford. There was about 700 kids there. <laughs> Once I said that the concert was over, they flooded my tape table. And so I go back to the table. I go, so how did we do? <laughs> and there's this mound of change on the table. All my tapes are gone. We went back home, added it up, we broke even. So it was cool. I can't count how many concerts I've done, a lot. I decided after many concerts with bands, actually winning some band tournaments, I decided to go solo. Uh, to this day, still do solo. I, I don't think I will ever do a band again. I play with my son, Jonathan. He goes, Dad, you know, you're really hard to play guitar with because you kind of fill in everything with the piano. And I'm like, I didn't know that, but I had to because I'm my own band. You know, this last album, in my opinion, is the compilation of the best of who Galen is. It's all the, the songs of the last four albums that I've done, three albums that I've done, that people, their favorite songs. And you can get it on uh, CD Baby or iTunes or, you know, galenpaul.com. Because it moves mountains still, it has the power to kill, and a loved one might be... I've wanted to be the Christian superstar for many years and that's gone. I, I could care less about that. My, my only concern is to just be real and to lead people to Jesus. If it's just one-on-one, -on -one, that's what I, what I care about. Jesus died for one person. He would, he would have left the 99 of the sheep to go after the one. And I think that's where my heart is.